All right, welcome Algebra 2 class. Let's do this. What is game plan today? Um, students integrate technology into calculating zeros. So basically, if I were to ask you, hey, um, let this r of x function, right? It is x cubed minus x squared minus 20x. If I say calculate the zeros of r of x, what do the zeros of r of x represent algebraically? What do they mean graphically, right? This we should be good with right now, okay? As a do now, I just want you to do this the old way or whichever way we do it, right? How do we calculate the zeros of this function, right? What do we do? We uh, make it equal to zero and then we factor it. So let's uh, write it down. But actually, try and do it by yourself and then watch me do it if you need help, okay? So if you want to see this solution, here it is. So I have x cubed minus x squared minus 20x and that's equal to zero, right? What's the GCF? The GCF is uh, x. So you factor out an x, and then it becomes x squared minus x minus 20 equals 0. And then what? Um, this you can't touch, but this, can we factor this more? And you can. So it's x minus 5, x plus 4 equals 0, right? Because negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So this is the right combination. And then what do we do? We say this x equals 0, right? This x equals 0. This x minus 5 equals 0. And this x plus 4 equals 0, right? We got to do all three of them, OK? So then you say x is equal to 0. That's one of them. What's the other one? Plus 5 plus 5, x equals 5. Minus 4 minus 4, x equals minus 4, OK? So notice that these are the zeros of r of x, okay? And what does that mean? What do these zeros mean algebraically? By now, we should be good with this, that if I take this zero, if I take r of zero, if I put zero into, the, into this function, I better get zero. If I take five and I put it into the function like this, I better get zero. If I take negative four, and put it into the function, it better be zero. So let's take a look. If I were to do this, what is zero cubed minus zero squared minus 20 times zero? What is five cubed minus five squared minus 20 times five? And what about this one? Negative four cubed minus a negative four squared minus 20 times negative four, okay? If I put any one of these into my calculator, I better get zero. So let's see. Um, and also very careful when you put in parentheses. Let's do the difficult one, right? Let's put, let's put this in here. So what do I get? Parentheses, negative four, parentheses, close, cubed, right? Minus parentheses, negative four, parentheses, square, minus 20, parentheses, open, negative four, parentheses, close, enter, bam, I get zero. And notice, it'll be the same thing if I do it for the other one. So here I have zero. It's zero. It's zero. Okay. What do the zeros mean out graphically? Okay, well, if this is our graph, right? Here, if I plug this into the calculator, let's see, if I plug in x cubed minus x squared minus 20x. How do I do that in with the calculator? Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, that's good. So let's plug this in. Um, x cubed, and watch, I want you to do this with me, okay? Don't just watch me do it. Take the calculator and do everything step by step. Minus uh, x caret two minus 20x, and when I graph it, Let's see, what do I get? Okay, so here it doesn't show me everything. What I want to do is I want to adjust my window. And if I go to the Y min, let's make this, I don't know, 50 or something and make this positive 50. Notice that I'll explain very soon what this does. The Y min, Y max, X min, X max. I'll show you what these things do. But if I hit graph, notice how my graph is going to look a lot nicer. It looks more like this, right? And notice, where are my zeros? Well, they're the same zeros we had here. This is one of them. It's this negative four, which is right there. Zero is this intersection right here. And it's five, it's right there. So here, what is the game plan today? 
If I say calculate the zeros, we have to factor, and then this is how you do it algebraically. But let's say if you just want to be fancy and use the calculator. So how, how to calculate the zeros of any polynomial using a calculator? Well, here, we could actually find the zeros here and don't say, oh, because I go left and I go right and I say, oh, Mr. G, look, it's very close. But you see, even when I go left and right, it doesn't show me negative four, right? Even though that's a zero. How do you tell the calculator to lock in exactly where it is? So let's take a look at this. The first thing we're going to do is anytime we use the calculator, right, we want to reset the calculator just in case if there's anything funky. So let's take your calculator, right? And to reset the calculator, you're going to first step, you're going to hit second, and then you hit the plus sign, which is right here. And notice above the plus sign, there's that MEM, right? There's an MEM here. So that means memory. You hit memory, then you go down to seven, which is reset, you hit enter, then all RAM, enter, and then you go to reset, enter, and then bam. RAM is cleared, happy face. So what we did was we just noticed how the window is back to where it was and that this function was erased. But what I want you to do is let's plug it back in. Uh, let's see. So if I have x to the third minus x to the second minus 20x, right? And if I hit graph, and again, you see how it doesn't show us exactly everything. So let's go back to window. And let's change the numbers. Let's change the y min to negative 50 and the y max to 50. Okay, and then hit graph. Okie dokie. And now it's giving us this. So we know what the zeros are. We know they're here. But how does the calculator tell you that? So let's take a look. What we're going to do is we are going to 1. The first step is plug in the y value, right? So we plug that in. So we did step one and step two. Step three, we hit the graph. Oh, whoops, sorry. Yeah, hit graph. And now adjust your window. So we did that. We adjusted the window a little bit. Now this is where we want to do this. Now we hit, let's go back to graph, right? Let's go back to graph. Now hit second, then trace. And notice above the trace is calc, and that's what we want to get. So we have calc. And now we have uh, our options and we want to pick zero, okay? So now once we get to this, we should have some screen like this, okay? So let's take a look. Um, I'm gonna put this over here. Let's put this inside and this is it. So let's take a look. Here, you see how there's a blink thingy thingy over here? What I want you to do is only go left and right. So if I go left, notice how you're going on the polynomial, right? And if I go this way, I'm going to the right of it. Notice when I go up and down, nothing is happening. And in another video, I'll explain what the up and down do. But for now, we're just doing left and right. So here, let's do this. I go left bound and notice how, is there a glare here? Okay, um, wait, let me change it. Okay, that's better. Here, there's a left bound. And notice how my cursor is to the left of the X. So I hit, here, let me zoom out, sorry. Here, and I hit enter, okay? And now you see how it's blinking again. Now it says right bound. Now I wanna go above, and I hit enter. And now what's happening is the calculator is guessing a point here, and it's guessing a point here. And what's happening is it's going to lock in onto that point. So guess, you hit enter again, and it, boom it calculates the zero right there for you. So you know your zero is at negative four and your Y value is zero. Let's go over here. I know, going back to this picture, I know that we have other zeros, right? We have zero is a zero and five is also a zero. What I want you to do is, using your calculator and the calculate command, let's calculate it. Let's go back, right? And then let's go left bound. So now I'm gonna go all the way here and notice here I'm going to go under right you see this is the left of the five so I hit enter then I go right bound and I go close to it as I can I hit enter again guess and then boom 
it gives you zero, which is five, and that's it. And this is how you do it with the calculator, how it graphs it for you. Okay, now another really, really nice thing you can do, and if you want, I want you to have this in your notes, right? If you can, take a second and write this down, okay? So, you know, you do this, you go as close as you can, you find the left bound, you find the right bound, and voila, and yes, okay? Now, the second part is how to plug in any value into the function using a calculator. So here, notice how these are the zeros, right? If I want to plug zero into this function, you could do it with the calculator like what we did before, right? Where we put this into the calculator and we put it here, or you could do something else. And I'll show you this. Very nice move over here. So let's take a look. Okay. What I want you to do is take a second and write this in your notes. Um, let's imagine we have this polynomial, right? Imagine if you have g of x is equal to this whole crazy thing. And I say, hey guys, find g of 2, right? So what do you have to do? You have to plug 2 into this whole thing. So it's 2 to the 5 plus 4 times 2 to the 4 minus 3 times 2 to the 3rd plus 5 times 2 to the 2nd minus 10 times 2 plus Eight, right so you're just plugging in two for everything now with your calculator you can do it with the parentheses right if I wanted to do it right now parentheses two parentheses close what I want you to do is let's just see what this number will be very fast four parentheses two parentheses close carrot minus three Parentheses open, two parentheses close to the third, um, plus five parentheses open, two parentheses close, square, minus ten, parentheses plus eight. Okay. And that whole thing became 80. There's another way of doing this, which I want to show you, which is a very good trick, is if I hit y equals, right, and let's clear it. What I want you to do is let's plug this into the calculator, okay? So if you plug it in, it should be what? x to the fifth plus four times x to the fourth minus three x to the third plus five x to the second minus 10 x plus eight. Okay, now the program y sub 1 is programmed for here. If I hit second quit, I come back here. And I should probably write that. Um, then you hit a second, uh, second mode, right? So you plug it in. Now watch what we could do. If we go to this program vars right here. Let's go back to here for a second. Oh, sorry. Almost done with the video. Um, Okay, so we go to vars, and then you go to y vars. So once you hit vars, you should have this. Then you go to the right. Now we're at y vars. And now if you hit function, if you hit enter, notice that this y1, if you hit enter again, your y1 is here. But that y1 is this y1, the one you plugged in. So here, what you could do is, I could put a parentheses, and here I could put this 2, Right? I could put this 2 into that function that I have. And if I just put in a 2, parentheses close, I hopefully I get 80, and you get 80. Right? It's the same thing as if you would have done it like that. So this is a very, 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 very nice technique to be able to have in your skills of using the calculator. Okay? There will be an assignment for you to do in class. I'll, show you. I'll see you.